you will be so much more well received and you will be able to accomplish things nobody else can in their career because what i've seen unfortunately is most developers especially do not communicate very well they don't invest in their communication they don't value their communication and i think it's just because they don't believe it matters i don't think it's that they're lazy i think they don't see the connection between all the technical stuff they love to do that they wish they could do even more of and that communication's the barrier. Have you ever been plodding along on a software project and suddenly management brings in a consultant? They start getting support for the ideas that you've been telling management all along. And your only conclusion is they must be the biggest BS artists you've ever met. Well, halfway into my career, I switched from being a software architect employee into consulting. And I actually had one of the worst performance reviews of my entire career three years after making that switch. Soon after my second consulting project, I was brought in to my boss to attend the performance review that year. And they did those 360 degree reviews. I don't know if you've heard of these where they basically ask all your colleagues what they think about how you're doing on the job. And I got page after page after page. Jamie doesn't know how to communicate with clients. Jamie belittle, belittles clients and talks down to them. Jamie arguments with or argues with clients about like their own needs and what's important to them. And hearing all this feedback was a really sinking, difficult experience in my life. But I drove home that day and decided to be committed to, I'm going to figure this consulting communication thing out. They actually told me, hey, Jamie, if you don't figure this out, you can't really work here anymore. And I could have went back to being an employee, a tech employee, but I took it as a challenge. And those first two or three years I was at the consulting agency, I also wanted some of the skills that those people had. So if you've ever been on your project and thought, man, what is it about consultants that they seem to win support from people where I struggle? I want to share with you in this video some of the things I've learned about how consultants communicate differently that you can do yourself. You don't have to be a consultant to do this. It's really just a decision that you make. And if you do decide to do this, you will actually get support and be able to do things in your career on your projects that none of the other employees, whether they're programmers, product managers and support DevOps are able to accomplish because you decide to basically focus on your communication. So here are nine ways that you can communicate just like a consultant. The first thing you can do is you can focus on communicating the way the business communicates. You know, if you're an individual contributor like a programmer, often we're working a lot just amongst ourselves, right? Or if you're again in DevSecOps or, you know, some other specialization related to technology, you're going to tend to communicate the way that you hear other people on the internet talk that have the same role as you and your peers. And often, you know, I would get into meetings with the product owner or customers or just other people in the business, and I would communicate the exact same way. And if instead, I think this, this is the thing I learned to do as a consultant, when you join a team, you basically listen much more actively to all the different people that you meet and find out what are their goals? What is this business really trying to accomplish? Not just like what is the coding they want me to do or what's the technology that they want me to understand and implement, but actually how does this business operate? What are they really trying to accomplish? What's, you know, what's on their roadmap? What's really important to them? Now, a lot of companies, if you're an employee, won't even tell you that this is important. They'll just hope that you do it. Or if they look 
look at you as, you know, again, if you're a programmer as a code monkey, they won't expect you to do this. They'll just expect that you're just going to, you know, write code and that's your main value. But if you want to win support for some of the really bigger things in your career that are going to come up against some resistance, I think one of the biggest things that you can do that'll super help that I learned as a consultant is take the initiative yourself, whether people ask you or not, to really ask a lot of questions and try to understand the business better. That'll inform all your communication going forward and it'll super help. The second thing consultants do that really helps them be, I think, superior communicators often is their presentation skills. You know, as an employee, when I would give a presentation or I would just in a meeting share my opinion, I was often very concerned about the image, right? The political implications of what I'm about to say. Is this going to get me in hot water? Is this going to make this other person look bad? Is this going to threaten, you know, things that the company have already said they don't want to do? And obviously, you know, whether you're a consultant or an employee, you do want to take into consideration the visibility of things that you say and what people think. But consultants, and I just learned this again, the longer I did it, we have to be willing to provoke clients. We have to be willing to impress people, even though other people at the company may look at us like, man, I wish that consultant didn't come in and give this big impressive presentation because now I feel threatened because I'm not doing that quality of work. I wish they'd just get rid of this person. And you may have heard, I read an article, this was like 12 years ago, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, it came out of game theory, actually, a certain uh, section of academia. And they were talking about how many people, when you're an employee, there's like a downward spiral of performance. Performance. Meaning, you know, if you come and join it onto a new team, no matter what your role is, you kind of look at the level that people are operating on that team and you basically operate subconsciously. This is something we don't even realize we do. You operate below people because you're worried you don't want to make people feel threatened. And I think there's some wisdom in not trying to outshine your manager too much, for example. But if the company's hired you as a consultant, you know, they're usually paying more money for you. You have to be willing to put out impressive, you know, ideas, concepts, be able to present those in front of people. And I think if you as an employee can try to overcome that tendency we have to keep our head down, not want to rock the boat too much and be willing, at least strategically, to really put some brave ideas out there or really be willing to strongly recommend, let's say, a technology or an approach or, you know, a process that, you know, is going to ruffle a few feathers. It can really help the rest of the company look at you as more engaged. It'll help you get support for things. It'll help you have to work through negotiating and um overcoming resistance, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But this is this is just one thing that, again, consultants have to do. They have to be willing to brush up against people's sensibilities because they have to ultimately justify their value. And I think you as an employee, if you want to move ahead, you got to do the same thing. third way you can communicate like a consultant that'll really help you as an employee, and I touched on this in the first point, is varying to different audiences and adapting the way that you communicate with them. You know, when I would join a company as an employee the first half of my career, I knew executives were different than developers, and I knew that the product manager seemed to be more focused on the business. But beyond that, that was about it. I just kind of intuitively listened to people and kind of tried to guess, okay, this person's less technical. This person seems more focused on numbers. And I went almost purely from my gut, which I still think is good to trust most of the time, on how I would decide to communicate. But when I got into consulting, I learned that you can be way, way more effective and get way more support for your ideas if you actually practice the art of really understanding what's different about a person or a group of people and tailoring your communication 
to them. Now, this is very similar to you might have heard, you know, if you're about to apply for a job and you're going to cold apply with a, a resume to a job application, which I I don't recommend these days. There's there's better ways of doing it. But let's say you're you're still kind of doing that. You know, there's common knowledge that you should adapt your resume or your cover letter to the position that you're about to apply to, right? If you're specialized in some technology or, or some industry, like you work in oil and gas and you're about to get a job in pharmaceutical or in tech, you know, you're going to change the words of your resume a little bit so that it sounds like you're a better fit. This is really doing kind of the same thing, but conceptually when you're talking with people. So, you know, you, you can even notice this amongst your peers. Uh, and, and I started to realize this more before I became a consultant. But, you know, you can be on a team. Let's say there's six to nine programmers or, you know, five different infrastructure ops people. And every one of them is going to have a little bit different way of communicating. And, you know, hear me here. This is another one of those subtleties that people don't don't seem to get in some of these episodes. I'm not saying don't be yourself. I'm just saying what you choose to elaborate on, what you choose to focus on, where you decide to go into more detail, where you decide to pull up to higher level concepts, pay, pay attention. I try to do this. This really helps me where I, you know, I pay a lot of attention. I really actively l watch, listen, kind of analyze, study each person that I meet and try to figure out what are they measured by? You know, what makes them tick? I have another episode of the show called uh, The Art of Persuasion, A Programmer's Guide to Persuasion. It's something similar to that. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description. But in that one, I go through a lot more detail about how you can actually persuade people better by doing this and a couple other points, too. And hey, if you've realized that communication is one of your weak points in your career, you're starting to see, wow, communication is super important. Maybe the reason I'm not moving ahead, maybe the reason I'm not, you know, staying at companies longer and I'm getting let go is because I've just not really focused on my communication. I want you to encourage considering joining my Patreon or the YouTube membership. These are two different ways you can get access to my private Discord server. We've got a lot of really great people on there, people who are my coaching clients who've worked with me and gotten professional IT career coaching from me, also people who have bought my courses, and of course, people who have joined the Patreon or supported the channel. So if that's you, if you're starting to think, man, I, I really need to improve my communication, these videos are great. But if you'd like to actually speak with me and other people who are all trying to improve you know, their communication, their effectiveness, and do it in a healthy way, uh, consider checking it out. The fourth way you can communicate like a consultant that'll super help you and set you above a lot of people as an employee is to have frequent feedback loops on the effectiveness of your communication. This is something I never saw done until I got into consulting. Really, the idea here is ask people what they think about how you communicate. So, for example, if you, you know, if you're on a software project and it's like, let's say you're a developer and you have three other devs, you know, that are kind of at the same level as you, maybe you have a tech lead and you have a development manager or an engineering manager or something like that. If you recently, you know, had a series of, you know, scrum meetings or let's say you're doing Kanban, you just had design meetings talking about different tasks people are doing and you've started to sense, you know, there's some friction or you're just not sure. You're like, I wonder if people think I'm doing a good job, not in the middle of a meeting with a bunch of people do this privately, you know, try to get some time not just via a Slack message, but actually get on a Zoom call or hopefully you're in person. You can actually be face to face, you know, get, a, get into a private meeting, go to lunch, go to coffee with the person and just ask them, say, you know, I'm really trying to get better at communicating. Could you give me some feedback on how you think I'm doing? Where do you think I'm doing really well with communicating? Are there some areas you've seen that maybe I could improve and just be quiet and listen? hear what the other person has to say. Really try not to get defensive. You might hear some things that surprise you that maybe you don't agree with, but this is super valuable stuff. Um, I, as a consultant, I do this with my clients, not just, you know, peers, but like if I'm on a consulting project and I was hired for a high bill rate to help with something real strategic high up in the company, like let's say the enterprise architecture group, I will ask, the enterprise architects that hired me, hey, 
how do you think I've been doing with communication? Are you guys feeling okay with like the level of support I'm giving you for all these initiatives we're trying to accomplish? Is there any ambiguity in this? Like, are you feeling like you're pretty, you, you're pretty on board with this? You understand what I'm, what I'm trying to communicate? Or do you think there's some room for improvement? And again, I'll stay quiet and just listen and they'll tell you. You know, they'll say, hey, I, you know, something I've heard, this might surprise you is people will say, or maybe not. I have a YouTube channel and I talk all the time. You're, you, you, maybe this won't surprise you. So I've had a few people, especially earlier in my consulting career, who said, no, I think you're good. In fact, I think it's a little too much, <laughs> you know, like you're an over communicator. Um, I've had to learn over the years to be more concise with my words, to be more intentional and really think, depending on who I'm talking to, not only how to adapt what I'm saying to the audience, but to choose the most effective words and use the least of them possible to get my point across. The fifth way that you can get much better at communicating and thus get more results in your career and have more influence like a consultant is to really invest in your communicating through negotiation skills. I think many of us think the main area where we need to apply negotiation is when we're thinking about getting a promotion or thinking about getting a raise or there's some big battle between us and another person who has an opinion. And that's the only time when really negotiation matters. And I meet a lot of people through coaching, and I saw a lot of this as a consultant when I would go into companies and work with other developers and other people, where I'd see people with super great ideas, but as soon as they hit some resistance, they would just fold and they wouldn't push back at all. And, you know, if you're an employee, I understand. I remember, I've been an employee the first 12 years of my career. I worked for four different companies. I know that side of doing, you know, tech work as an employee. Because you work for the company, you're susceptible to their, you know, laws. Well, you, there's usually an employee agreement of some sort or like an employee handbook, right? There's some rules you have to uh, adhere to and you have a boss, you know, you, you tend to feel disempowered a bit. I mean, it's it's normal, right? I've got this authority above me. Essentially, I have to get, you know, approval for them for things. But as a consultant, I mean, ultimately, if you are working with a client, a company hires you as a tech consultant and you come in and the moment you get resistance, you just say, OK, I'm not going to push for this thing that I know has to happen to be successful. You're not going to be successful. You're not going to get them results. You're not going to do a good job. And so they're probably not going to bring you back in again to do future work. So, you know. Getting good at negotiation is not something that I think happens purely organically. I think definitely the more that you practice negotiating with people, having to weigh trade offs, trying to come up with compromises, you're going to improve. But there's also books, there's seminars you can attend, there's courses, there's tons of information about how to negotiate um, hostage uh negotiators, people who negotiate to get hostages released. This is actually an interesting group of people you can look to to see, you know, how are pe how do people negotiate well? How do they bargain? But if you really want to master communication like a consultant, you know, as an employee, consider getting better at negotiation. The sixth way you can be way more effective as an employee if you communicate like a consultant is during problem solving discussions pushing back, making sure there's clarity, not getting pushed into just getting started because of authority pressuring you. I've talked about this in a lot of other episodes of the show and the dynamics between, you know, managers and line workers of some sort, regardless of your tech position. But I think as employees, we tend to feel like if we're told to do something or we're handed some work, it's up to us to just accept it. We're, we will push back to a point. We will ask for clarity to a point. But we really feel again, you know, like I talked about earlier, a little bit disempowered due to that authority, you know, line worker kind of mindset or arrangement. But, you know, as a consultant, I've had to learn that really, even if a business hires me and they're really saying a lot of things that they're that indicate that they're super urgent, like we got to get started. We need to do this now. No, this is important. We don't have time for this. I will not let them force me into just getting started. I will be like, hey, I understand the urgency behind this. 
the whole reason I'm not going to start on this immediately is because I want to make sure when we do this, we don't just find out that what we just did is a mess. And now two months from now, you're angry at me because the thing that I built for you or the thing that I did doesn't meet your requirements. And you've set all these expectations with other people and they think that we're done and we're really not. Let's pre let's prevent that from happening. Let's actually just put the brakes on. Take the time to really make sure that we know what we're doing. I need more clarity from you before we move forward. This is for your benefit, not just mine. If you're willing to future pace people, I talked about that in that persuasion episode I mentioned earlier, and get them to think about what's the future going to be like with this bad result if you push me into doing something I'm not ready for. Sometimes that's exactly what you need to do to get people focused on the problem. Make sure they understand the root cause and that you are on the same page with them as far as your communication before you commit to any work. The seventh way that I think consultants sometimes can be superior to employees or just they put effort into something that really helps them with communication is project documentation. As an employee, I hate to be the one to say this. You probably know this. I think many employees, for all they say they care about documentation, when they get under crunch time and there's a lot of pressure to get work done, testing and documentation tend to be the main two things that go right out the window. But as a consultant, I learned every engagement I do, every project I do for a client, it's going to end. And when I leave that company, all the people that got to know me during that consulting project, they have formed a reputation about me. And if I leave them with no good documentation or no good process where they feel like they can own the work that I did, they can execute it, they can change it, they understand why it works the way it is, there's critical links to resources and things that they need. When they then go talk to some other business owner or, you know, five years from then, I'm trying to win a, you know, work with a new client or get a new job. Let's say again, you're an employee. You're just trying to get a new job. All it takes is one person who remembers. Oh yeah. I remember working with Jamie. He did a lot of great work, but he handed a big pile of crap to us at the end. We had no idea how to execute. I mean, I know everything understood, you know, made sense to him. Of course we could ask him, but he didn't do the work to make sure that when he was done, we could really own the thing. You know, I don't know. I, I, I don't, unless he's learned his lesson, I'm pretty weary of bringing him in. I mean, you don't want people saying that about you. So again, if you place a premium on written documentation, now again, this is a form of communication. You're not verbally communicating it, but you're communicating important information about the work that you did, the state it's in, how they have to you know, take ownership of it, evolve it, work with it, change it, manage it. If you invest in that, that will really raise the quality, the perception of your work to everybody else at the company where they're like, wow, this person really takes seriously that the stuff that they build, they know that they're not necessarily always going to be there. And this is one of those things where in the short term, you may not benefit from it as much. But as your career moves forward and let's say you get laid off and you now need to join a new company. You know, having just at least one person in, in a company who can say, hey, Jamie, yeah, I worked with him. He was incredible at documentation. That was one of his strong points. I mean, if you guys want to hire him as a consultant or an employee, um, I think one of the things I'm looking forward to in working with him again is he really does a good job of making sure everything's just not in his head, like the whole team has the knowledge. That is a huge value proposition to companies that are considering hiring you. The eighth way that you can communicate like a consultant, if you're an employee, that'll really help you succeed in your career is to really invest in managing the relationships at the company you're at of the people you work with. And let me make this real tangible for you. As an employee, it's tempting to avoid 
difficult people. Now, I'm not just talking about a person with full blown, you know, narcissistic personality disorder who's like in that movie Bad Bosses or something and they're just like complete ass and make your life a living hell. I'm just talking about people who tend to be a little micromanagey, a little skeptical, kind of awkward, just something that grates on you, that bothers you, and you tend to want to avoid that person. As an employee, you know, we want to be comfortable. Humans like to be comfortable. We like to avoid conflict. We don't want to rock the boat any more than we need to. And I think that tends to lead to sometimes having unresolved issues between people or unspoken resistance between you and let's say another person. Let's say you've met people on the ops team and there's one person there who just kind of has an attitude all the time, kind of is is pissed off all the time. Maybe they take it out on you a little bit, but it's mostly just it's everyone. They're just kind of in a, in a bad mood. You're probably not going to want to communicate with that person any more than you need to. But as a consultant, let's say you're doing work and you have to help them with continuous delivery or DevOps or something like that. You can't avoid the difficult person on the ops team. It's critical to get buy in with them. And so, you know, managing the relationships with people, even the difficult ones, meaning not avoiding interaction with difficult people is really important if you're going to actually be successful with what you're tasked with. You know, I find, and I'm sure you have too, that even the you know prickliest of personalities are the most difficult of people. If you spend enough time with them, like call meetings with them, is as irritating as they are or as difficult as they are, be in their face, you know, be a regular part of their week. Make sure like they kind of can't escape you. You're not now I'm not I'm not recommending that you just force yourself down their throat to a, a level that they start to get pissed off at you. But just don't avoid them as they become more familiar with you, as they realize, you know, this person's not threatening. This person puts up with my outbursts. This person puts up with maybe that I'm just depressed and I'm having a hard time because I've got some personal things. Again, I'm talking about the person you're having a hard time with. With, they will inevitably start to open up, warm up to you, and then you can improve the relationship and maintain it and actually make progress on the project. And the ninth thing that you can do if you want to become much better at communicating as an employee and get a lot of the same fruit that consultants do by investing in it is continuous learning about communication. I think as individual contributors, managers, you know, a lot of people in different tech roles, we love to listen to podcasts about languages, or we love to read books about management. We love to go to, you know, workshops about some aspect of AI or, you know, cloud infrastructure, all the stuff that's fun, that's geeky, the hard skills, so to speak. And hey, that's awesome, you know, to a point, right? If you remember the episode I did about learning addiction, I, I gave some warnings in the past about that. But if you want to actually be really successful, no matter who the people are, what their like past pain is they've encountered, dysfunction on teams, being good at communicating takes learning. It takes practice. It takes continuing, ongoing improvement. And hey, if you're hearing this and you're tired and you're like, Jamie, I'm just trying to get through my freaking project. This all sounds great, dude, but like I'm exhausted. I want to encourage you that if you double down on communication, part of the reason you might be exhausted is because you haven't developed the skills to negotiate with your boss in a way that keeps your work life balance healthy. You know, if you have healthy work hours, if you're able to set expectations with people that let you work in a way that your mind can rest when it needs to, and you're not burned out and you're not frustrated, you're not angry, then investing in another language or technology isn't going to get you there. Investing in communication is what will. So have you ever been frustrated when people listen to consultants maybe more than you I've been there. When I was an employee the first half of my career, the first couple times I encountered consultants, I was baffled. You know, I thought, you know, I'm looking at the work that they're producing. It doesn't seem to even the quality of what I'm doing. 
Why are they in meetings with the VP? Why are they getting all this support? Why is the stuff that I've been telling the company all along to do suddenly the right thing to do? Because the consultant's saying it. Well, if that frustrates you, I want to encourage you to step up and invest in communication. It pays so many dividends. And you're going to find, again, especially if you're in a tech individual contributor position, you will be so much more well received and you will be able to accomplish things nobody else can in their career because what i've seen unfortunately is most developers especially do not communicate very well they don't invest in their communication they don't value their communication and i think it's just because they don't believe it matters i don't think it's that they're lazy i think they don't see the connection between all the technical stuff they love to do that they wish they could do even more of and that communication's the barrier. And if you do see that connection and you're willing to invest in it, tell me what you're facing. Tell me what's held you back so far. Why haven't you made this a priority? What would you need to do to start doing it today? Until then, leave me some comments. Thanks. Mm -hmm.